So there's this thing called the New Democrat Coalition, right? And it's all Democrats. And uh, you go to their website, it says the New Democrat Coalition is made up of over 90 full forward thinking Democrats. Boy, I, think, I bet we have a different definition of forward. They just mean forward to the bank. Yeah, yeah. Like that's where they're going forward For, to. Going forward thinking Democrats who are committed to pro-economic growth, pro-innovation, and fiscally responsible policies. Boy, if we could ever just get our government to be pro-economic growth, right? This be, <laughs> when are they going to be in favor of the big guy instead of the little guy? Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's, it's about uh, time. So what that sounds like, that's neoliberal claptrap. That's what that is. And I got, and Ralph Nader told me I should stop saying that. Right. And I should start saying corporate, uh, global corporatists. That's global corporatist claptrap. Yeah, but what's a cooler t shirt? Let's be real here. Neoliberalism sucks or global corporatists suck. Is a bummer. Sucks. Like, like it, <laughs> I mean, neoliberalism sucks kind of rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? Like, yes. Uh, you know? Yeah, but if no one knows what it means, mm. New Democrats are a solution oriented coalition seeking to bridge the gap between left and right by challenging outmost. Now, this is, so this is how you know they're full of crap. Well, to, they're looking to bridge the gap between left and right by challenging outmoded partisan approaches to governing. New Democratic Democrats believe the challenges ahead are too great for members of Congress to refuse to cooperate purely out of partisanship. Already, oh really? So why don't we? Why don't you work on? Why doesn't the New Democrats work with the conservatives in Congress on things they agree on? That the conser- like I don't know Medicare for all. Did you know that the majority of Republicans are for it and nine out of 10 Democrats are for it? Is that the kind of thing you can work together? That's not the kind of thing you're talking about, is it? It's not talking about things that the left and right agree on that help people. It's left and right that help businesses and corporations and your donors. It's not about things that actually help people. Because if it was, you'd be talking about Medicare for all, because that's the th- something the left and the right f- agree on. How about ending the wars? Are you for ending the wars, New Democrat? No, no, because that's something the left and the right also agrees on. ending the. But you know who doesn't? They're donors in Wall Street and the military industrial complex and fossil fuel. So that's how that's how you know that's all. This is all uh, globalist, corporatist, claptrap BS that they're going to rise above partisanship. They're going to rise above partisanship to start another war, to regulate Wall Street again, give more tax breaks to billionaires. That's what, how they're going to rise above. They're not going to rise above partisanship to actually give you things like Medicare for all, living wage, ending the war, uh, an infrastructure plan. They're not going to do our jobs bill. No, that's not what they're doing. Uh, so there's a bunch of, uh, so here's Kate, Katie Hill. She ran right over here just north of uh, where we live. Katie Hill. You know Katie Hill, right, Ron? Katie Mm -hmm. Hill. She's a congresswoman-elect serving. She's part of the Blue Wave. Mm -hmm. She's serving what's what they call Antelope Valley. Uh, She's California's 25, and she takes no corporate money. So that's really great that she takes no corporate money. No corporate money, no special interests. Let's go to work. She just joined the New Democrats. Why would you... Okay, so there's that. And then also here's uh, Sharice Davids. She beat uh, our friend Brent Weldon, Welder, Mm -hmm. who was a real progressive. She got all this Emily List money, and she knocks him out. She's supposed to be progressive. She she joins this group, the New Democrats. Uh, Ryan Grimm tweeted out, Susan Wilde and Sharice Davids, who won primaries running as progressives, have now joined the pro-Wall Street caucus. That's what the New Democrats are, the pro-Wall Street caucus. It's fine to say you support them, but stop pretending there was no ideological differences between them and their opponents. That's yeah. what they love to say. Mm-hmm. Oh, you just don't be a purist. They're just there. They agree on 99% of the blah, 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 blah. And as soon as they get elected... They joined the pro-Wall Street caucus. Mm-hmm. What are you going to do? They have to or else they won't win in their district. Oh, that's a red district. Oh, yeah, dude. That's what they love to tell us. Here is the, uh, uh, this is the um, communications guy for the Justice Democrats, Waleed Shaheed. It's nice when, you're, when your name has like an alliteration to it. Waleed Shaheed, isn't that Yeah, nice? that is pretty cool. Um, I wonder if he's a comic. Sounds like it. <laughs> Should be, yeah. 
So so here's uh, here's the new uh, incoming Democrats who joined the uh, the new Democrat caucus, which is just a, they're just, just another. So there's the blue dogs and new Democrats, which they're basically the same they're the thing. Same thing. And what have they been doing since 2010? Well, gee, <laughs> the face of them was Joe Crowley. What did he go on to do? Joe Crowley he's exactly right. Well, here he so while he Shahid tweets out would love to, an explanation of why some of these progressives. And he puts it in quotes, join the corporate back caucus. And then he he lists their names. He tags them. And here's who they are. It's uh, so Susan Ellis Wild. She's from Pennsylvania. Former Allentown City solicitor. She's a proud mom and now a proud pro Wall Street back member. <laughs> uh, Colin Allred. He's a civil rights attorney, former. Uh, what is that? Oh, oh. Uh, Housing and Urban Development yep. uh, official, former NFL linebacker Colin Alred, Congressman elect for Texas 32, where I was born, raised, and pledged my allegiance to a Wall Street pro organization. <laughs> also, that's Lizzie Penil Fletcher. She's um, she's where is she from? She's from Texas, seventh district. Um, she's she says she's a fierce advocate. She's a trusted partner. She's a proud Houstonian, and she's running to replace John Culverson in Texas 7, and she's also running to pledge her allegiance to a pro-Wall Street organization. Also, Veronica Escobar, also from Texas, six things. She's a proud mother, fortunate to live in El Paso, the greatest community in America, even more fortunate to pledge her allegiance to a pro-Wall Street organization. So pro publica you want to really know who's uh, so I'm going to tell you who the new democratic organization is. Now this is an article from 2010. So this was um right before the democrats got wiped out in the midterms. So the democrats took over, the new democrats started screwing everything in favor of corporations and screwing people and then the democrats lost their ass in 2010. So what happens is you you lock, elected Barack Obama. They continued to legislate exactly like George Bush would have. And they got they got the biggest wipeout ever in 2010. So. Um, the new Democratic coalition was formed, the new Democrats was formed as a House caucus in 1997. Following in the footsteps of the Democratic lead, the DLC, which is defunct now, the DLC, which I've told you before, was started by Bill Clinton and Al Gore, and that was their response uh, to Ronald Reagan. They were like, if you can't beat him, join him. So they decided to become corporatists, and they started a thing called the Democratic Leadership Council, which was a thing to crush progressives inside the Democratic Party and take corporate money. They had people from the Koch Brothers Foundation executives on their board. That's how right wing the Democratic Leadership Council was. And of course, remember what the Democratic Leadership Council went on to champion was uh, deregulating Wall Street, repealing Glass-Steagall, exploding the prison population, gutting welfare and passing NAFTA. There's your deal. There's a dem- so the, de- the new Democrat coalition was formed as a House caucus in 1997, following in the footsteps of the Democratic Leadership Council and President Bill Clinton's third way policies. So these are all the things that brought us Donald Trump, the Democratic Party becoming the Republican Party. That's why we got Trump uh, designed to make Democrats and their platform more business friendly. So that's what the <laughs> third way. I third love way. that. The third way. You know third what the way. third way means? Like, hey, if you're a conservative, you can run as a Republican. You can run as a Libertarian. And then Bill Clinton said, actually, there's a third way. There's a third way. There's a third way. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, Ron. I'm gonna have to steal that. <laughs> the new Democrats were a pro were as pro business then as they are now. This is again written in 2010. Many of the group's members, including Kind and Crowley, Joe Crowley, supported the 1999 Graham Leach Biley Act, which repealed marquee financial legislation passed after the Great Depression and paved the way for financial institutions to become too big to fail. You know, like Glass-Steagall. 
So that there it is. There's your linchpin of the of the economic crisis and the Wall Street crash right there. And it was supported by these Democrats and pushed by Bill Clinton, Joe Crowley, the Democrats. And in the meantime, they're vilifying people of color. That's right. And amp ramping up the war on drugs. A year later, many also voted for the Commodities Futures Modernization Act. Mm which curtailed regulation of financial derivatives, including the products that played a major role in the collapse of energy firm Enron in 2001 and helped to bring the world economy to the brink of disaster in 2008. So they also, so both of those things, the new Democrats support. So that's who they are. They're basically Republicans who are okay with whoever goes to the bathroom wherever they want. So now you, now you get, why, why we got Trump? You get, this is why. Because there is no alternative to the Republicans. Yeah, you know, the question we shouldn't be asking is like, why are progressives, I mean, we should be asking that question, but the question we should also be asking, other than why are progressives joining this organization, why is this organization still a thing? Well, this is why it you is need a third miserably. party. <laughs> this, this, these people shouldn't be in our party. Mm -hmm. These people should, these if are the people. If your first priority was winning, it wouldn't still be around. These people should join the Republican Party and make them sane again, because what these people used to be called was sane Republicans. But now they're just Democrats. And now all the wing nuts and crazies and extremists are in the Republican Party. They're all extremists. So what should be they should be populated by these new Democrats and then they would be considered sane Democrats, sane Republicans. Mm -hmm. And they should these guys should not be in the Democratic Party. Just what Ron said. If you're a conservative, you could run as a Republican, a libertarian, or a third way. You run as a Democrat. <laughs> in the past year and a half, new Democrats have pulled in more than $18 million in campaign contributions from their lobbyist fundraising network. The lobbyists, in turn, have mingled with lawmakers and their staffers at least 850 times during fundraising events and informal get-togethers. And how did that cash work out for you guys in that 20s head midterm? How did all that... Wall Street cash turned off for you. How all that lobbyist cash turned off for you in that 2010 midterm? Oh, that's right. You guys, you guys got your ass handed to you? Got wiped out? What did they lose? 62 seats? Something like mm -hmm. that? So you can't, you got to take the cash. It's the whole point because you got to win. So that's why they say they take the corporate cash because you have to win. But Hillary outspent Donald Trump two to one and still lost. So that should put to bed that idea. Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders. Right. puts to bed that idea. But it, it doesn't because all we've been talking about since November 2016 is Russia. Over the past two years, their members have helped. Oh, so this is what the new Democrats have done. This is, again, from 2010. So this is over the two years they had complete control of Congress, the Democrats. Complete control of Congress, a filibuster-proof Senate for a few months, and the presidency, the White House, had Barack Obama, who was voted in on people wanted him to change stuff. He had a mandate to change stuff. And here's what the Democratic Party did in those two years. Over the past two years, their members have helped biotech companies win lucrative patent extensions during health care reform. That's a big deal. And that what does that do? That hurts everybody because it makes drugs way more expensive. And they didn't have to do that. That's kind. That's the kind of stuff right wingers are supposed to be doing. And nope, the Democrats did it. They also fought to ensure that banks receiving TARP money didn't have to trim executive bonuses. These Democrats jammed up the legislation to make sure that the bankers didn't lose their bonuses. The Democrats did that when they had complete control of Congress. They also helped block get this is what this is even worse. So not only did the people who crashed our economy and put a world that hurt on people get bonused for it, not put in jail. But the people who were who who uh, have the burden of the economic crisis, the homeowners, what did they do to them? Did they help them too? Did they get them a bonus? No. What did the Democrats do? They helped block a proposal to allow bankruptcy judges to adjust home mortgages. So they had a bill that was going to allow 
judges, just like normal judges do in bankruptcy proceedings all the time, adjust your payments to every creditor you have, except the Democrats block them from being able to do that. So now, a step, now people got kicked out of their houses because of that, because of Democrats. A step many experts believe would have reduced foreclosures. So a lot of people got kicked out of their houses because the Democrats came in and blocked a normal relief thing. And why did they do it? Because they got paid to do it. Okay. This is when they had complete control. Now do you understand why half the country doesn't vote? This isn't because of Jill Stein. This isn't because of Jagoff nightclub comedians saying I'm not going to vote for a warmongering corporatist anymore. This isn't because of Russia. This is when the Democrats had complete control of government. Ron? I was just going to add, uh, it mentions patent extensions mm -hmm. in this paragraph. And there are a million and five things wrong with our healthcare system. So we often overlook, but evergreening and stuff like that, what the pharmaceutical industry does to like extend patents and then like they'll keep like a lock hold on drugs that people need by like changing the color of a pill or something. We often overlook how evil that is and they do it all the time and it allows them to price gouge prescription drugs. In many cases, what people need to stay alive. And, you know, because there's a million and five things wrong with our healthcare system, that often goes overlooked. But, um, yeah, it's a special brand of evil. And here you see Democrats fostering it. Um, it is a special kind of evil. This is all these are all special. These are all your government conspiring against you in the middle of an economic downturn when the Democrats have complete control of government. As they gathered for their May retreat, the new Democrats were working on what would become their biggest victory yet, weakening key components of financial services reform legislation. This was in 2010. Their, their, their biggest victory, weakening key components of financial services reform. These are Democrats' biggest victories. Do you understand what's wrong with the Democratic Party? And then when you point this stuff out that this is actually the Democrats, this is how people respond to you. This is how the corporate Democrats respond. They'll Ryan, they'll go, oh, Ryan Grimm is a divisive hack. Ryan Grimm, who tweeted out this story about the about the new progressives joining the new Democrats. So this person says, Ryan Grimm is a divisive hack. And any person who retweets him when he puts out this type of tweet is a huge part of the problem of dividing the party. Well, remember the rule of argumentation. Whenever you attack a source first and have nothing else to say, it's because of that. It's because you have nothing else yes! to say. Yes! So this, this is a person saying, you're supposed to defend corruption, idiot. <laughs> Don't you know, because when you're in a party, you defend the corruption? So what this person says back, no, electing candidates that work for the interests of the wealthy against the interests of the average person is what is divisive. The Democrats' victory is going to be short-lived once people see how they govern. And boy, they're going to get us. Look what's already happening. I mean, all you have to do is see what Chuck Schumer did this week. What, what the he, fuck? He put, on, he put Joe Manchin on the Energy Commission. Cole and friendly. People, and people try to pretend like the Republicans are the ones who, who aren't uh, trying to fix global warming. How can you wag your finger at Trump for pulling out of the Paris Accords when the Democrats put Joe Bastian on the Energy Commission? Well, the fact is, when you do it, you'll look like a big damn hypocrite, and people see through it, which is why half the country isn't voting. It's not because of Jill Stein or Russia. It's because of the Democrats. And when you tell the truth about the Democrats, people tell you, shut your mouth. Quit talking about corruption in our government and everything will get better. This is an adult. I'm going to bet any money whoever this person is, is an adult child of an alcoholic. Um, that's not, that sounds like a joke. It's not. I, I would bet because that's the kind of stuff adult children of alcoholics say. They don't get mad at the corrupt person who's actually screwing over our country homeowners and screwing over the idea of what it means to be a Democrat. They're not mad at the actual, they're not mad at the monster. They're mad at the person who pointed out someone's corrupt. That's an adult child of an alcoholic. So congrats, Lori. <laughs> CR, whoever you are. So I just thought I'd, pa I, it's way worse than people think. So this idea, and I know, and I much respect to, to uh, Jank Uger 
And, uh, y- you know, uh, he funds a show for me to do on his network called The Aggressive Progressives. That is a counter narrative to what he's saying. So that's a big of him. I would never do it back for anyone else. <laughs> but I just disagree with that idea that we're there, there's an aircraft carrier called the Democratic Party. And we're going to board it and take it over instead of trying to build our own. It's just like. No, you have to get on. You have to kick every motherfucker off there first. And they're all double barreled, loaded up with ammunition and corporate cash ready to fight you. You got to you got to board that ship. So I think what what I'm trying to do is try to get progressive leaders to focus on what we actually need to do, taking over the Democratic Party. Especially when they're they're Look what's happening. Look what Nancy Pelosi's doing. They literally shifted to the right after the election. After losing to Trump, the Democratic Party shifted to the right. And, and the Democratic Party supports people like Joe Manchin. Oh, you got to vote blue, Joe Manchin, because the Republicans worse. But guess what? If we didn't support Joe Manchin and a Republican was there anyway, which just like having a Republican, then Chuck Schumer would have to pick an actual Democrat to sit on that energy committee. So um, here we are, same problem, same problem. And, uh, you know, what, what? it's clear what's going to happen. We had Ralph Nader on in his new book talking about how the rats reform Congress. And what's really neat is unique to what's happening in France is that you're going to have to get out in the streets and, and, and shut stuff down. You know, so the Occupy Wall Street where you just kind of annoy people, that doesn't do it. You have to shut stuff down. That's what they did in France. They shut it down. Capitalists shut the streets down. So that's what I think progressive leaders need to get together and start doing that. Uh, because this, this, try selling. Are you really going to try and sell Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer to the, to the country again in, to, 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 in 2020? This is your big idea. Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer. And by the way, they're not going to do a goddamn thing in these next two years that make a fucking difference in people's lives. They wouldn't even stand up for DACA. Our next live Jimmy Dore show is February 1st in Burbank, California. Go to jimmydorecomedy.com for a list of all our live shows and please become a premium member if you can. Become a patron. It's the way we support this show because they're coming at us and we give you bonus. We give you hours of bonus material every week. Check it out. Become a patron. And if you can, make sure you're still subscribed. They unsubscribe people every day. I know it sounds crazy. It only takes a second. Please make sure and click that bell when you subscribe so they'll send you a notice when we drop a video. Thanks for your support. Mm